opportunity to hear from some of the local business leaders and today we have the wonderful pleasure of having Bill Lynch join us and just to you know just very quick overview in terms of who he, are, who he is because I don't want to steal his thunder or bite into his time but Bill is the um, CEO of ProChain Solutions which is a company that's based in Virginia if I'm not mistaken but the thing that I'm most excited about, and for all of you soccer lovers and FIFA watchers and all that good stuff, Bill is the owner of Montgomery County's one and only professional sports team. So believe it or not, Montgomery County does have a professional sports team and it's women's soccer. So for those of you soccer fans, you definitely want to get out to the soccer flex and support those young ladies who are absolutely amazing. Um, both uh, academically, athletically. Um, these are brilliant young ladies. Talk about a great family um, event. You definitely want to make it out to the Soccerplex at some point during their season. So without further ado, I'm going to turn the floor over to Bill. Okay. Thank you. And Kelly, so and I'll, I'll probably move around a little bit. Um, so it may be going on and off the mic, but I, th I think you can probably, I think my voice probably carries well enough. Um, so I'm Bill Lynch, president of ProChain Solutions. Uh, it's a project management software consulting company, um, very much focused on dramatic process improvement sorts of things. Um, in my non-day job spare time, um, I'm the owner of the Washington Spirit Women's Professional Team. Um, third, third shot at resurrecting um, the league I think this time around we've got the business model pretty well wired. Um, if you haven't experienced it, I encourage you to, to get out and experience it. Um, I'll, I'll, it's, the subject has little or nothing to do with um, the women's soccer, but I'll, I'll tell you there's, there is not another set of 20 women role models that you'll ever find anywhere else in society as far as I'm concerned that match what we have out there. Um, six months a year or so playing. So I'd encourage you to, to get out. The quick background, I spent um, electrical engineering undergrad, um, spent about 10 years in the Air Force. A good part of that was spent literally just going out and doing big process, improve, business process reengineering and improvement sorts of things. So almost internal consultant for, for six years or so. Um, got out and started the um, this company that focus on the project management side of things. Uh, the, uh, there, it's, it's, uh, there's a lot, a lot of things to try to get through, um, but I'll, I'll just hit the high level. This will be kind of a hybrid. Um, most of our work is actually spent in the large organizations, um, big projects, um, big project management, big resource management sorts of things. The, the book that you you all will have um, really kind of takes, it's spent about the last 15 years working that, um, billion dollar plus improvements in some of the, the best known companies in the, in the world, um, kinds of companies. Although you get huge improvements, the, the next level of improvement after some of the methodology and, and the re-engineering work is, is how you actually get the individuals to integrate with that, change some of the behaviors, change the way they look at things, change the way they do work. Um, so this will be kind of just a quick overview um, and a hybrid kind of of the organizational individual um, approach and, and things to think about. Okay, so today's, today's world, I think everybody will pretty much agree, high stress, high variability. Um, everybody's looking to do things faster more predictably. Um, in, in a lot of cases when people think about doing improvement, um, almost always go to technology first, right? Cell phones, laptops, iPads, um, new software, new alerts, um, kinds of things. When, when people are implementing new processes, there are a lot of inconvenient kind of conflicts that, that come up that tend to be ignored or um, kind of washed over as you're, as you're trying to get some of these new things put into place. Um, and then you wonder why, in, in most cases, um, 
process improvements, when you go back and look at them, the amount of improvement you actually got versus what everybody sold you or predicted you were going to get tends to be a small fraction of the vision that was sold early on. And it has a lot to do with how these things are actually implemented in our experience. Okay. So in, in any kind of a, a paradigm shift, big change in, in the way things are done, um, there are some, some basic things that happen. Um, you challenge basic assumptions of the way you're doing things. Um, it, it also, without question, creates conflicts. Um, and kind of the, the bottom bullet is um, to, to get good personal productivity, it's really going to require rethinking and challenging some of the, the basic values that, that people hold true. And I'll, I'll, I'll hit what those are. And so for, for now, for done for this overview, um, understand the magnitude of potential improvement in a way that goes beyond the technology and helps people understand and address <coughs> at least the, the basic conflicts that you'll, you'll have in trying to get dramatic improvement. Okay. So in this, this will be the key thing. If, if nothing else, um, the, the multitasking piece of this in the front is, is critical. So we'll walk through the basic example of I have three tasks to do, three tasks on my list. Each of those three tasks are three days long, right? What, what should happen? I, I should know task A is the most important, task B is second priority, task C is third, and work each of them from start to finish. Start day one, day three, the first task is done, and work them sequentially, right? That's, that's not what happens anywhere I've ever been or, or <laughs> any, anywhere I've ever seen. So in, in fact, a more typical kind of occurrence is I'll work A, get interrupted, asked about the status of B, I'll work some on B, I'll put that down, I'll work some on C, come back to A, go to B, go to C, right? That's, in, in general, we tend to not work things from start to finish. We have other things that interrupt us. We put things down and, and kind of churn through a task list. Right? In, in addition to that, the, the black space you see at the bottom there in between, if, if I'm doing tasks that take some, some level of mental capacity and I'm interrupted, I put it down, and I come back to it in a day or two or a week or a month, in, in some cases, there's a lot of setup time that I'm going to have to redo. I may, if it's writing something creative, for example, I may, I may as well just start from scratch if I put something down, leave it alone long enough and come back, right? So there's, there's that lost productivity in the, in the downtime and the switching as well. So it's not just the time that gets extended for, for breaking the task up. I also lose time in between all of those tasks because there's breakdown and setup time. For, for critical tasks. Right. So wh what you see is a task A that could take three, three days if I knew it was the highest priority work it from start to finish. In the, in the bottom example, you know, it takes seven days plus. Um, so I've got potentially a whole stack of these tasks in an organization, maybe thousands or tens of thousands of these, that when people predict how long they're going to take, set their project plans, do their estimations, know there are a lot of things to do, and we'll estimate those seven days plus in their plans, and then of course we, we, don't, we don't make the vast majority of the plans as well. Right. So the couple, a, a couple points here. Um, from, from what we've seen, in, in an example like this, you, could you would literally be better off if you put your tasks on a list, if you randomly prioritize them, no priority from anyone, but you captured your tasks, you randomly prioritize them and you work them from start to finish, you would, you would get more done than you're getting done today in most cases. So think of the, think of the person who's in an organization where you know, I've literally seen people with 150, hundreds of tasks on their, on their sheets of things to do um, and are constantly interrupted and constantly jumping from one task to another. There are, there are times where you can look at somebody's to-do list, come back in six months, look at their to-do list, and there's no appreciable difference in, 
in what's on their to-do list, right? And, and we all probably have to-do lists that for whatever reason haven't become ur urgent or important enough that have been there for more than six months. Okay. So, you know, the basic point, random priorities but working things from start to finish would be better in, in most cases and in most organizations. So talk about today's, the, the typical kinds of values that we have in an organization. Right? What do we value? Everybody wants to be responsive. We're, we're inclined to get things started, the new, the fresh, um, the, the bold ideas kinds of things. And we, we definitely want to be seen as somebody who can hit deadlines, right? All typical values. So the downsides of, you know, I, I have the mantra of being the ultra responsive person, right? So just a, a simple example, you know, I'm driving, should be focused on driving, cell phone goes off, I grab it, I'm talking on the cell phone or, or texting on the cell phone sorts of things, right? What does, what does that do to our ability to focus on the task at hand, right? There's, it's, the stats are somewhere 20 to 50 times more likely to be in an accident um, while operating the car and the cell phone at the same time. That same sort of impact on the ability to get things done in an organization happens if I can't create that, that focus. So in, in responsiveness, it absolutely, if, if I respond to every interruption, every phone that rings, every knock on the door, every email that beeps when it hits my laptop, um, I'm clearly gonna be in the multitasking cycle, which I just showed you. Um, creates a situation where random priorities would, would be better than, than what we're doing. So it also encourages multitasking. <clears throat> starting things. You know, we're, all, we're all inclined to, to start the new thing. You know, what, what's the impact of starting too many things? If I have 10 books and I start all 10 books, when am I likely to get the benefit of any one of those? You know, every, everybody has nightstands with a stack of books on them or <laughs> shelves full of hundreds of books. Um, you literally never get through one if you, if you start too many. There are, there are other reasons to read multiple books at the same time, um, <laughs> but in general, the, the point is you know, relatively clear. Same thing with home improvement projects. If you start 150 things, you know, you're a decade down the road and you still have the shutter that needs to be hung on the front of the house. Um, kinds of things. The same thing is exactly the same in business improvement projects in organizations. It was not uncommon for us to come into an organization with our own <laughs> business improvement project and have to deal with literally hundreds of business improvement projects in a large organization that were going to change everything for the company. Um, and then, you know, some of those have been around literally for, for decades and, and haven't been implemented. So deadline, everybody likes to meet deadlines. What, what typically happens um, is you, you've got a person who's going to have to own that task and the deadline. They know they're in a variable environment. I know it would take me two weeks if I could really focus on it, but I'm not going to estimate two weeks to you because I know things are going to happen and it's going to take me longer. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to negotiate safety time into that estimate. So it's, there's always a negotiation. Um, I want more time. The person who wants to get the project done earlier wants the project done earlier. So you make some compromise on those times. So now I've got four weeks to do a two-week task. I'm also inclined to stay busy and look busy, be there early in the morning, leave late at night. What am I going to do? I'm going to add in other tasks over time, right? So I've got all of these tasks, inflated estimates, a lot of things to do, little or no priorities, and I bounce from from, from task to task. So in understanding some of the practical realities of, of deadlines, um, deadlines in most organizations literally lead to the multitasking, which leads to everything taking dramatically longer than it, it needs to be. And I'll just skip through this, is basically what I just, the, the bottom part, um, literally, I won't go through it exactly, but literally 60% of projects that are started in, in companies um, Either, are either late, over budget, um, reduced scope, or they literally are canceled outright. So over 60%. And when they're, when they're late, over budget, it tends to be 
twice, literally the average, it takes twice as long as people predict to begin with and are two, two plus times, one and a half to two and a half times the budget, original budget and scope is typically dramatically compromised. Um, that's, that's the typical picture in, in most organizations. So I'll just, I'm going to skip through there. So, so one of the things you have to do to, to dramatically improve what you get done is move from what seem to be standard, typical, good values in an organization and, and realigning those values with, with things that, that don't necessarily go away from responsiveness, but it has to be the right type of responsiveness, the right type of starting things, um, the right reasons for um, setting, setting key dates. We'll, we'll walk through just quickly on the um, moving from responsiveness to priorities, from starting to finishing, from hitting deadlines to speed. Okay. In, in the book, um, the, the book is written as a novel, um, so it's a story, but this, these things are also in there as well. We have four values that we've um, articulated in the book. I'll cover three here. Um, we we want to value priorities over responsiveness. So if, if literally in some of these organizations, I could be working on a product, the key task for a product that could, could mean $3 million, $5 million a day when this product hits the market. Meanwhile, I'm allowing myself to be interrupted by chit chat or phone calls or emails um, that have little or no value to the, to the throughput of the organization. Um, so responsiveness is admirable, but it has to be done within the, the right priorities. Value and finishing over starting, the same, imagine the, the multitasking slide. What we want to do is figure out what we're going to work on, work it from start to finish, get it done, hand it on, um, and you can dramatically increase the, the throughput by doing that. And then for, for critical tasks, we, we want to focus on the speed rather than, than meeting a deadline. So if I, I know something's a priority, work it start to finish, do it as quickly as I can, pass that on and increase the velocity of these tasks through the organization as opposed to worry. And if that means it's, it's late or it's 15 weeks early, um, you focus on the speed. And just, again, quick example for any set of things um, that you have, to, uh, tasks that you have to get done or a project that you have to get done, there are a critical set of red tasks that run through. Um, Focusing on those from start to finish to drive the, the end of the project. Um, you know, that's one way to set priorities in the project. Okay. And then same thing, finishing over starting, sorry. We've got two tasks. What do I work on first? Um, you know, given that I'm, I'm one day in and now task B hasn't been worked at all, what do I tend to do? All right. Do you pick switching back and forth to keep everyone happy? Do you work tasks in, in sequence? Okay. Speed over deadlines. Okay. One of the so so relatively simple, but in, in a lot of cases counterintuitive um, approaches. One of the other things, and I'll just literally touch on it briefly, and then take some questions. Um, very seldom do you go into an organization and actually break habits and change habits. It tends to be a, a slow, stacking, incremental change um, if, if you get dramatic changes to begin with. There, there are organizations that we've been in for over a decade um, who have gotten literally multi-billion dollar impact in the organization, but you could jump into any cubicle and somebody still has 15 things that they're juggling and working on. Um, in that organization, even though everybody understands that the impact of multitasking sorts of things. Um, so one of the challenges on the behavioral side of things is, is how you get people to stay aware and conscious of some of those, those key principles and, and get those habits to change over time. Um, one, of the, one of the guys I've come across, a guy by the name of Marshall Goldsmith, um, you know, coach, life coach, mentor to the stars of the the Fortune 50 um, kinds of guys, um, top, top coach and business coach in the world. Um, yes, literally has someone call him 5.30 in the morning every day and run him through 
a set of 20 plus questions. And they're essentially, how well did you whatever yesterday on a scale of one to seven, one to 10, how well did you set your priorities yesterday? How well did you focus um, on them from, from start to finish kinds of questions, personal business questions, sorts of things. Um, one of the things, having that right, the right set of questions that on a daily basis you, you look at, think about, and answer, whether that answer is on a scale of one to seven, the answer is zero, or it's seven, it forces you to think about those and keeps you conscious of the, you know, it would be good to have two hours of uninterrupted time today um, to actually power through and get some things done. Um, so one of the things I've, I've done, and it's still, it's still beta, but it's functional and out there, there's a website called focusbender.com. And the idea is for, for individual productivity, a set of questions that keep you focused on some of the things that we talked about. Literally, send you an email every morning. You look at it, you answer it for yourself. There's some, some output, some, some graph sorts of things so you can see what your answers look like over time. And it's essentially just between you and the, you and the system, but keeps you conscious of, of, of key questions. You can, you're welcome to check that out if you, if you have some time. Okay. So quick, you can go through on your own, randomly prioritizing, but starting, working start to finish would be better for most people and most organizations um, today. So prioritize, finish what you start, focus on speed over deadline. Okay, and the questions, and then I, said grab a book, but I put books out on the, um, on the chairs. If, if you want to leave a business card, I'm happy to send you a coupon code for a free Kindle download of the book if you, if you read off of your, your Kindles or computers. Um, and then when you get a chance to read the book, I'd certainly appreciate any feedback that you have. Thank you, guys. Appreciate the time.